Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the GABA receptors and their involvement in epilepsy. Okay, so um, we have discussed that GABA receptors, most of the GABA receptors which are uh, within the brain, have this general structure where you have two identical alpha subunits positioned here and here, and two identical beta subunits positioned here and here, and then a gamma subunit positioned uh, here. Okay, now let's see some specific examples. So, the first one I'll talk about is a uh, receptor known as the alpha-1, beta-2, gamma-2 uh, receptor. Okay, so you'll notice that I do not need to tell you um, how many of each of these subunits you have, because it's assumed that you already know this. So I'm assuming you already know this knowledge, and what do I actually need to tell you for you now to be able to construct the GABA-A receptor? All I need to tell you is which alpha subunit you pick, which beta subunit you pick, and which gamma subunit you pick, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I've told you which alpha subunit I've picked, alpha-1, I've told you which beta subunit I pick, okay, beta 2, and I've told you which gamma subunit I pick, gamma 2. Okay, so now, just to make this utterly clear, I'll actually draw the picture for you. So, here's this cartwheel drawing again, where we're viewing the GABA-A receptor from above, from the extracellular aspect, okay. Here are the five subunits making up the GABA-A receptor. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and in here you have alpha one, another alpha one here, beta two in here, beta two also in here, and then gamma two here. Okay, so that's how uh, you um, structure this sub, uh, this GABA A receptor, and this GABA A receptor that I've shown you here. This is the most important one in the entire brain. This is the most common GABA-A receptor in the brain. So if you are going to learn a GABA-A receptor, that is the one to learn, the alpha-1, beta-2, gamma-2 GABA-A receptor. Okay, so we'll draw another one that can sit in the shadow of this one. Uh, it won't get the purple circle. Uh, so the next one we're going to talk about is alpha-2, beta-3, gamma-2. Okay, so um, this one, if I show this one with purple here, this one we're picking alpha-2 as our alpha subunit, we're picking beta-3 as our beta subunit, and again we're picking gamma-2 as our gamma subunit. Okay, so let's draw this receptor out now to make it clear again. So this one is another very highly expressed GABA A receptor within the brain. I wouldn't be showing you it if it wasn't. Okay, so it's not as important as this one, but it is very important. Okay, so here are these five separate subunits again, and you now have alpha 2 in these two positions here, you have beta 3 in these two positions here, and again you have this gamma 2 subunit in this position here. Okay, and there are three more that I want to show you, but don't despair. I don't want to actually draw out another three of these diagrams. So instead, what I'm going to do is cheat. I'm going to do all three of them at once. So, I'm going to talk about alpha-3, okay? Um, then what we're going to have is beta-1-2-3, and then finally, gamma-2. Okay, so what do I mean by this? What I mean three separate receptors here. So let me split these up into three separate receptors. I mean you've picked alpha-3, and you've picked beta-1 and gamma-2. So there's one specific receptor. Here's another one. You've picked alpha-3, and I'm being really inconsistent with my notation here, putting the 3 as a sub suffix, sorry, a subscript, and then not as a subscript there, but then mind. Beta-2, gamma-2, I'm sure you can cope. Alpha-3, beta-3, gamma-2. So these are the three different receptors, all with those three different beta subunits that are um, available to it. So, basically, what we've done here is we've taken alpha-3, which I didn't even write, we've taken one of the three betas, and then again we took the gamma. 
Okay, and this creates us another three very important GABA A receptors. So just to draw this, and I'll just sort of put a generic beta subunit where the beta is. Okay, so here's the pore of the GABA A receptor, and here are the five subunits making up the GABA A receptor. One, two, three, four, five. We then have alpha three in this position here. We then have a beta subunit, whichever one it might be, beta one, two, or three, and then we have the gamma two. Now, what I hope you've gained from this is an appreciation of how important gamma two is. In all five of these vastly important GABA A receptors, the main GABA A receptors within the brain, gamma two is a component. Okay, and that's going to be important when we start discussing the epilepsies, which I promise won't be too long now. In fact, we'll come on to it in just a moment. So, before we come on to it, let's just discuss where the GABA binding sites are, because our discussion of the GABA A receptors would not be complete if we didn't discuss where the binding sites were. So the binding sites are between the alpha and the beta subunits. So you have one binding site here, between this alpha and this beta subunit, and you have another one over here between this alpha and this beta subunit. So basically, the binding sites where GABA-A binds to the extracellular face of these GABA-A receptors are within the cavity between the alpha and the beta subunits, basically. So one GABA will bind here, one GABA will bind here, and that will cause the conformational change that will open this receptor. Now, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll turn our attention to um, epilepsies which involve uh, mutations in these GABA-A receptors.